All right, Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, again, I need to put in the reminder, if this is your first video in the series, uh, please start from the beginning. It'll make more sense. It'll be understood easier and better for you. And again, this is only for Mormons. This is the audience that I'm targeting with these video series. So if you're not Mormon, you're anti-Mormon, ex-Mormon, less active Mormon, and you're not going to be interested, uh, but if you are, great, just understand that the understanding that I'm uh, appealing to is the Mormon understanding, the Mormon theology, the Mormon uh, mindset, uh, and so uh, understand that as you're watching these these videos for the series and uh, uh, to go over uh, what I have done so far briefly we started with the introduction uh, talking about uh, the uh, Messiah series uh, according to Mormon understanding uh, even though Mormons it's going to be new for you isn't it uh, lots of information that you had never known to know about uh, or even consider uh, uh, that's the purpose of the video series is that uh, what Joseph Smith had started uh, was a restoration of the ancient religion from Egypt not of the New Testament Gospels uh, and so part one was uh, the uh, Messiah was to know Egyptian and Hebrew and I pointed out how Joseph Smith was trying to be that Messiah uh, as he uh, uh, translated Egyptian uh, I pointed out how he translated Egyptian uh, and uh, also uh, learned to uh, translate Hebrew uh, but was murdered uh, that's where we get into uh, the uh, Egyptian uh, origin myth, uh, the creation, the beginnings of Egyptian, and how their their narrative, their main narrative, uh, is part of their lives, their government, their religion, their culture, their practices. Everything in their life is based around the narrative, and it's sex ed. And then I get into uh, part three, which is Baby Messiah. And uh, so unfortunately we don't have uh, baby pictures to show you to contrast with Baby Yoda. Uh, but Baby Yoda, you know, he's a Jedi. He's got the Metachlorians strongly in him. And, uh, and so he's able to do this little cute little hand thing. And, uh, he's more powerful than Yoda, and blah blah blah, and uh, uh, that's it, it's the same theology. Uh, the uh, Jedi is uh, a take on Judah, uh, and so there's lots of Hebrew words that are uh, given new vowels in Star Wars, uh, even Amidala. Hebrew word, so uh, that's that's where he gets the uh, the uh, the force from, uh, and, uh, and the metachlorian element, uh, and uh, with baby Messiah, I uh, I point out lots of of uh, types and shadows and prophecies of uh, the baby messiah when he's to be born uh, where he's to be born where he moves and uh, uh, even pointed out uh, prophecy of uh, uh, burning his tongue on coal uh, as well as the fingers as well from touching it from the book of Jasher about Moses uh, Moses is the main uh, uh, person that is a type and shadow of the Messiah. Uh, that's who the Jews look to 
or should be looking to, rather than the Rambam, uh, for uh, who to look for for the last days. Uh, the, the Isaiah passages and Jeremiah passages about the branch uh, all come from uh, uh, the uh, Egyptian narrative. I do recall offhand that I had forgotten to mention the famous Isaiah passage that was turned into that beautiful Christmas music. Ode to Joy, or no, that's not Ode to Joy, it's Unto Us a Child is Given. I think Ode to Joy is a different one, isn't it? Alright. Unto Us a Child is Given. Government. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice, from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts, armies, shall be performed this. Uh, this is the Messiah. Uh, uh, this is what Christians believe is a prophecy of Jesus, of the narratives in the Gospels. Uh, but as I pointed out, uh, the Gospels are split. Uh, yeah, it covers a baby, uh, which is the Horus, Jesus, uh, but Jesus in the Gospels dies. He does not fulfill the government. He does not establish and restore the kingdom of David. And uh, thus he is not the Messiah that the Jews are looking for. They're looking for a full human, not the Son of God, but the Son of Man, to come and restore the kingdom of David, to restore the religion, to join the stick of Joseph and the stick of Judah into one, correcting the stick of Judah, answering all the questions that have been left behind by the imperfections in the book. And I uh, pointed out that uh, the Egyptian record uh, is the source for that and uh, showed from the Book of Mormon uh, that it's supposed to be uh, like the brass plates uh, as the brass plates is that united book of Joseph and Judah uh, and then got into marriage uh, and so the Egyptian narrative, sex education then I get into baby messiah who is the product of sex and then marriage, uh, uh, which uh, is all part of that narrative as well. The mound uh, with the earth rising from the waters is the baby emerging from the mother's womb. And uh, the uh, symbol of the pyramids as temples of this primordial mound as the house which is the wife, the queen, uh, and uh, all ties in together, and circumcision as well. Uh, and so this one is going to deal primarily with the conflict stories. This is the war stories. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have to uh, do another uh, pick screen capture from my Stellarium of uh, the uh, eclipse on the 21st of August because that indicates the beginning of the battle not the birth so when the birth sign of John's revelation occurs uh, it uh, uh, means that it's not the birth of the Messiah 
but rather his battle has commenced against uh, the wicked king and religious leader. Uh, take you to that first before we go into the various stories of the battles. Twelve. All right, Revelation chapter twelve. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Now, Joseph Smith's translation of the Bible uh, changes wonder to sign. Same thing. Uh, a sign in the heavens. And thus, something to wonder about. Uh, or a great wow. Uh, a woman. And that's the constellation Virgo. That's what this talks about. You know, she's clothed with the sun. The sun crosses through the zodiacs, the constellations of the zodiac, as does the moon, going round and round and round. And the woman constellation is Virgo, uh, which is a woman or a girl who has not had a baby yet, thus virgin. Uh, women uh, are those who have had a baby. Otherwise, you're a virgin, or a maiden, or a miss, rather than a missus. And um, so when the woman caught in adultery, adultery, therefore, is not fornication. It's not the act of sex. It's having sex, a child, with a woman who's already had children with another man. That's what adultery is. And so when they're talking about lust, when you lust after a woman, you're committing adultery in your heart. Uh, it's referring uh, to uh, uh, wanting sex with a woman who's had child with other men, with another man, hopefully just one. But, uh, today's culture is completely different. Women are able to take care of themselves, uh, and uh, have a job that will pay for uh, daycare uh, as much as our government is trying as hard as they can, especially under this current president, uh, whose government is collapsing, uh, which is what we're talking about today in this video. Uh, and they're on a full-on rage to uh, destroy as many uh, single women as they can and thus move children to uh, good homes rather than with their biological parents. Uh, so, uh, and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars and she being with child travailed in birth pain to be delivered and five she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Remember the iron rod, Mormons? And the child was got up to God and to his throne. And so, uh, what you see here is when they're talking about signs in heaven, and they're talking about the sun and the moon and stars uh, and constellations, they're talking about a specific date in the future. This is not, you know, some beast metaphor that we're supposed to go, oh wow, this has deep symbolic meaning and we have to spiritually comprehend it. No, this is a sign in the heavens that indicates a date in the future. Uh, for example, the sun darkening uh, on the 21st of August 2017, I could look up in my stellarium and find out that that was going to happen on that particular date, on that particular time. I can look into the future with my computer program and know of signs to come. And that's what I did for uh, this one as well as for uh, the dragon signs and the tail from the dragon. I, I use my Stellarium program. Uh, but uh, before I use my Stellarium program, or knew to use my Stellarium program. Uh, Fox 13 News here in Utah uh, announced in on November 4th, 2016, 
just a few days before the election, they announced the coming of the total solar eclipse. Astronomers already knew. They have the dates. You can look up on Wikipedia. They have a list of all the eclipses that are going to happen into the distant future. And they have all of them that have occurred in the distant past. We now can be seers. Do you understand that, Mormons? The keys have been given. Uh, and uh, <coughs> and uh, the uh, signs involve uh, a date. And so the ancients knew of this process and they knew their dates and they used their different calendars than what we have today but they knew of the specific date which corresponds with our calendar time so on the 21st of August 2017 that was the new year for the Egyptian religious calendar the ancient Egyptians knew of this date and they recorded it millennia ago. That's how freaky this is. And uh, if I hadn't told you already, the two eyes of Horus, the Horus Jesus, the son of Osiris, they represent Peter in Egyptian. P-T-R. They are uh, the the wadjet eyes, uh, though the one eye is considered the wadjet eye, but uh, the two eyes together uh, are Peter, which is seer. Uh, regular eyes, the two together, uh, represents to see uh, that which is seen. Uh, and so with Horus, uh, the eyes for him are seer eyes as a position of status in, as we all know uh, and so uh, the right eye as review is the sun and uh, represents government so eclipses of the right eye the moon or the sun shall be darkened is a collapse of the government over the area that it is because the solar eclipse over the United States was only over the United States it was not over anywhere else they had the path marked out they knew where it was going to be and so they told us on Fox 13 local news and uh, the ancient Egyptians also knew because they were that good in astronomy they didn't have computer programs uh, and so you know they had to do all their calculations out on paper and knew of the future date they knew of the future place that's how incredible this is and for John to know of this these dates here also is incredible because it corresponds with the Sun darkening the moon religion that's the left eye and so the moon turning to blood is a collapse of the religion remember the tetrad that occurred in 2014 2015 Mormons remember on the third tetrad which was on the morning of April conference 2015 what happened from the third to the fourth blood moon which, by the way, the Aprils were on the Passovers and the October conferences uh, or the October uh, blood moons were on the Tabernacle, the Feast of Tabernacles for the Jews. Uh, that was rare and it's even more rare if I were to get into an astro astronomical discussion the uh, 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 
all these signs that are occurring are rare. Uh, and uh, that's what's even more incredible, and astronomers are not talking about it. That, that's what's confusing to me. You know, they, they know that they'll get more attention into the field of astronomy if they talk about these things, and they got more interest from kids because of the total solar eclipse, but then they quit after it happens, and they wait for the next one in the next 20, 30 years, uh, which won't be in the exact location. They are never in the exact location. Uh, and uh, just mind-boggling. Uh, and so uh, the narration of the Egyptians, that primary narration of the commencement of the battle between Horus and Set is when Set plucks out the eyes of Horus. Uh, depending on the story, uh, typically it's the right eye for government that goes first and the left eye. Uh, the movie version, Gods of Egypt, uh, had both of them uh, plucked out of his eyes. <laughs> uh, they didn't quite stay true to the narration, but uh, it helps you understand. And so when you look in the scriptures, you see Samson. He gets caught by the Philistines as Delilah betrays him, reveals who he is, and cuts his hair, and loses his power, collapse, and uh, gets tied to the temple, and asks God for one last burst of strength, and then dies, so that he's not the Horus character that he's been led, uh, led to believe he was. Uh, but uh, him being a judge of the family of the Dan Danites, uh, not a coincidence either. Because Libra, the Scales of Judgment, is after uh, his birth in, v in Virgo, Virgin, Virgo, the Virgin, <laughs> the woman. Ah. And uh, uh, that's where he becomes a judge when he's at the top of the scales, because the judgment scene of the Egyptians uh, involves the judgment scales. And everybody must pass the judgment before they can present themselves at the veil of the Holy of Holies and, and enter into the presence of God as God. And uh, uh, I'm multitasking and I shouldn't be multitasking because uh, I'm going to have to stop the video and upload it and start in another segment if I don't finish. Uh, and so, let's see, <coughs> and that's causing me not to put full attention onto the video here. Uh, and so, yeah, let's go to uh, the battles. We have uh, Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain slays Abel. Uh, that's the Horus, or that's not Horus, that's the Osiris battle. When the hero dies, it's Osiris. When the hero wins, it's Horus. And so when we go through the scriptures, we find all this out. Uh, Abraham uh, goes up against Pharaoh. Pharaoh steals Sarah, adds her to his harem. Abraham eventually wins, gets all the treasures from Pharaoh, and uh, leaves and then Isaac is born. I mentioned that in the marriage one. Uh, then we have uh, uh, Jacob and Esau, uh, where Jacob is the usurper, uh, who wins, uh, but then we also have more contention as uh, 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 Jacob and Esau end up fighting when Jacob thinks it's an angel that he's fighting with. And uh, uh, also involved with Jacob and Esau is Jacob uh, stealing the birthright uh, with porridge, 
which is a variation that is more pleasing to the author of the Torah than the original narrative, which I did explain at one point, uh, and then steals the blessing as well uh, from Esau as Isaac is blind. He cannot see. It comes from the Egyptian tale of Horus being blind. But they made it the father who is blind, not Horus, which should have been Esau, the hairy man, uh, rather than Jacob, Jacob the usurper. Uh, and then we have Moses. Moses confronts Pharaoh. Let my people go. And then an awesome song from several artists. Let my people go. Uh, and Moses is battling for the throne of Egypt. That's the prince of Egypt. He is an heir to the throne and tries to take the throne. And he is usurped as a new dynasty takes over. Uh, and I went over that in the various episodes, which is why you need to review previous episodes. Then uh, uh, we have uh, um, Joshua, uh, who uh, battles in the Promised Land uh, to claim the Promised Land as his. That's also the same, and Joshua is the Hebrew name of the Greek version Jesus, thus why the Gospels Jesus is uh, also uh, mentioned there. Uh, and Jesus leaves the kingdom to Peter. Uh, that's supposed to be the Horus uh, Christ uh, in the representation of Peter. Because uh, normally you won't pass the, the uh, presidency to uh, the, the leader of the Twelve. Uh, it would have been a father-son exchange. Thus, Joseph Smith's death, uh, there were many who believed Joseph Smith's son was supposed to be the successor to Joseph Smith. Uh, that's why Emma didn't like Brigham Young and didn't follow him. Uh, and uh, notice Jesus also in the narrative goes up against not only King Herod, and Pontius Pilate as government, right eye for government, but he also goes up against the church, the high priest, Caiaphas. Jesus is defying both the government and the religion. Moses also was going up against Pharaoh who was the government leader and the religious leader. The Pharaohs were Melchizedek. They were the king they were the high priest. So Noah, in the, the Book of Mormon, King Noah, was the government leader as king and also was the high priest so that he could appoint priests under him. But the priest did not have his keys of high priesthood. Uh, they were only able to baptize. As Alma, when he left, uh, was at the waters of Mormon and they teach us the correct definition of baptism, emerging, uh, emerging under the water and coming out again, which again is the symbol of the Egyptian narrative of coming out of the waters, land coming out of the waters, the birthright blessing sun coming out of the waters. That's why uh, at baptism we are willing to take upon ourselves the name of Christ, and at uh, our initiatory anointings we now take upon ourselves the name of Christ as we become uh, a Horus, a Christ. And so I'm going to stop here for a moment as I take care of some housekeeping and then I'll come back. Okay, back. So the uh, reason for a messiah is the collapsing of both the government and the religion 
uh, anciently those two were combined in the Pharaoh. He was the religious leader and the government leader. But over time, they separated themselves. Uh, and during the uh, Jewish period, uh, the Jews were a separate religion who had been dethroned. Their, their kings had been annihilated with the Babylonian captivity. And so they just became the religious portion of the kingdom of Judah. Uh, same with the house or the northern tribes uh, as uh, the Assyrian kings um, destroyed the uh, kings of northern Israel uh, and subjected the people to the culture of Assyria Babylonians did the same thing to the Jewish kingdom and, uh, and with the return with King Cyrus of Persia, or the announcement, it ended up being the next uh, king who actually let them go. Uh, they uh, were able to uh, rebuild uh, their temple, but they were still tributary to uh, the Persians, and then to the Greeks, and then to the Romans. Uh, they never got to really establish a, a government again. The Sadducees uh, were more of a government religious entity, uh, whereas the Pharisees were the religious entity, uh, creating tons and tons of commandments uh, above and beyond the laws of Moses. And Jesus, of course, was represented as a rebel to these extra standards and traditions of the Pharisees, as the Pharisees uh, accused Jesus of violating their created laws above and beyond the, uh, the uh, laws of Moses. And Jesus never violated the laws of Moses, he just violated the laws of the Pharisees that were added. And that is crucial in understanding the Messiah. Uh, uh, when you understand that uh, Lucifer's plan of happiness was to force obedience. How do you force obedience? You have to provide a whole ton of commandments for people to be obedient to. Uh, you don't get agency. You must obey. And you obey commandments. And so uh, Lucifer's plan of happiness was uh, taking away agency and forcing obedience to a whole list of commandments. When you have a whole list of commandments, you're confused as to what you can and can't do, so you end up studying the scriptures all the time in order to be obedient, but in that way you're also being disobedient because you're not actively doing good. <laughs> and, and so you're in a constant state of paranoia, panic, and superstition, and etc etc uh, so that uh, you have to be compelled in all things whereas the uh, plan of Heavenly Father and the Mormon theology is agency uh, people get to choose uh, in the pre-mortal existence uh, those who come to earth are the ones who chose to come to earth and it was a binary decision even though there were levels of of uh, uh, desire uh, and uh, on earth uh, we see that uh, that opportunity but we see that uh, those who have been in power throughout history have tried to force people to obey and Lucifer uh, does this as he claims out of love because he knows the greatest reward comes from the highest degree of the celestial kingdom. And to force people's agency, they will then know and thank him as they receive that eternal reward. Uh, the only problem is, is that it's not done through agency. And, uh, and so the question you need to ask yourselves, Mormons, 
is which plan of happiness are you choosing in your life by your actions, by the way you raise your children, by the way you live your life, by the way you handle other people in society, at work, uh, at relig in the church, uh, in government situations. How do you live your life? Because by your fruits we will know you. Uh, so you can't just lie to us and say, oh, I, I choose Heavenly Father's plan of agency and then subject your kids into bondage and slavery because it's for their own good. And so ask yourselves, Mormons, I can't judge, I don't know you. Uh, you are the ones who know which plan of happiness you are choosing in your lives and for the lives of others that you have control over, or that you want to have control over. I should probably leave it at that. But uh, I'm here in chapter 12 also, it talks about the war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Uh, and so even though this is in Revelation, it's also part of Mormon theology. Uh, we just understand Michael differently, because Michael uh, in Hebrew means who is like God. And it's not a question, it's a statement such as, one who is like God, or he who is like God. The he, and the pronoun, is understood there. Uh, and, uh, and so Adam is one who is like God. Uh, being his son, as we went over already, Geb is Adam, and his father is Shu. He is like God. Uh, and so... <sighs> um, what other conflicts? Yeah, I already explained this. I, well, no, I, I have, but it doesn't relate to the Horus battle uh, because it confirms that Joseph Smith Jr. was, uh, in fact, Osiris rather than Horus. Uh, and this is the hard part to realize, Mormons is that we're supposed to study our Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon is the keystone of our religion. Uh, the new latest prophet does not override the Book of Mormon. If the Book of Mormon is the keystone, you can't have a future prophet destroy the keystone, make it invalid. Uh, all prophets must conform to the keystone in order to be considered valid prophets. We are supposed to test the words of all prophets, all religious leaders, all people against the principles of the Book of Mormon. And if they don't measure up, we know they're false. Unless they're trying to emulate the bad examples in the Book of Mormon. Laman and the Lamanites, the great and abominable church, the Antichrist, the Zoramites, the rich Zoramites, King Noah and his priests, the Gadianton robbers, and the Jaredites, and uh, it, it's horrifying because it shows the two plans of happiness in the Book of Mormon, and it tells us specifically what to look for that Lucifer will use as his organization for his government, for his religion, taking away agency, forcing people to be obedient to the standards they create, to the commandments they create. And by their fruits we know them. Um, and so I think that is it. There just there is no need 
for the Messiah if there's good government and good religion. You, if it's not Baroque, don't fix it. Uh, from Beauty and the Beast, uh, the uh, clock uh, makes that joke. Uh, and so I think that that is it. I think I've covered everything with the Messiah conflicts. But uh, yeah, Moses goes up against the religion and the government. Jesus goes up against the religion and the government. And the Messiah is going to go up against the religion and the government. Uh, in our day and time, it would be through lawsuits uh, where uh, judgment is had. Uh, and so uh, that's the thing is that as, as Moses struggled to uh, try to uh, win his lawsuit against Pharaoh and Jesus before Pharaoh or before Herod and Caiaphas and Pontius Pilate uh, both of them lost Moses lost but he did get to leave Jesus lost but he was supposed to die and be resurrected uh, the Messiah is supposed to win that's the difference um, but as you can tell from uh, the news that's going on our government is collapsing uh, Joseph Smith informed us that uh, the Constitution would hang by a thread uh, but an elder of Israel was going to save it notice an elder not a high priest and then others try to claim that it was elders of Israel and um, Benson said that it, it won't be the church at all it would be good people in the United States as he says that it, the Constitution will not be saved in Washington that is ominous as we are now entering into the trial phase of impeachment as the whole executive branch has now been implicated in criminal behavior worthy of impeachment. Our fate is in the hands of the GOP. Those senators who are in the majority. And two Mormons are in the Senate. Will they choose to save the Constitution or will they side with the King men? Remember in the Book of Mormon? King men destroy the Nephites, split them up into tribal groups before the coming of the Messiah to uh, the Nephite nation who has survived the natural disaster that occurred. Notice we are also experiencing national natural disasters with the climate crisis that we're experiencing. Notice the patterns with what we're experiencing with the narrative of the Book of Mormon. Not a coincidence. Uh, and uh, you have Samuel the Lamanite talking about signs in the heavens before the Messiah comes or as he is coming. Um, for his birth and for his death. Um, <coughs> and uh, those also are occurring. All the signs of John's, and all the signs of Joel's, which come from the Egyptians, sun, dark, and moon turned to blood, have all happened. We have another total solar eclipse coming that will X marks the spot over America on 8 of April 2024 um, there's more to that story I've talked about it in other areas but uh, uh, this video is primarily for uh, the Messiah conflict but that's what we're faced with now Mormons
The signs have happened. We've been warned. And now we have to look into ourselves and say, whose plan of happiness are we following? Have we used the Book of Mormon to compare the government with God's plan versus Lucifer's plan and the religion that we were born and raised into, if not converted, to compare them also with the Book of Mormon. There's lots of scandals coming out about against the church, not just about the executive branch. Do we judge based upon our feelings and opinions? Or do we compare with the Book of Mormon? Great and Abominable Church has a list of things that made it abominable. Polygamy was one of them. Neglecting the poor was another one. Being filthy rich and neglecting the poor. Are you making the comparison or are you refusing to make the comparison and just saying, I'm on Team LDS Church regardless? Uh, this is the underlying reason why I'm doing this series is to let you know that uh, it's all true it's happening but it can't be true and happening unless the LDS church was corrupt and collapsing unless the United States government turned bad and was corrupt and was collapsing we are at that crossroads and the point is which side are you on I hope you're on the right side or if you find out like me that I was on the wrong side that you get on the right side and you get on the right side fast all right I think that's it for this one. Um, do you want me to go over section 85? I guess I can, because I don't know where else I would put it in what I've got planned. So let's go to section 85 of the Doctrine and Covenants. And in verse 7. And it shall come to pass that I, the Lord God, will send one mighty and strong, holding the scepter of power in his hand, clothed with light for a covering, whose mouth shall utter words, eternal words, while his bowels shall be a fountain of truth, to set in order the house of God, and to arrange by lot the inheritances of the saints, whose names are found, and the names of their fathers and their children enrolled in the book of the law of God. Now this uh, was uh, written to W.W. W. Phelps, who was uh, in Independence, Missouri. He was the Bishop of Independence, Missouri. Uh, it is said that he repented, and therefore this prophecy is null and void. Uh, no, still valid, still in effect and applies to the Messiah. How? Why? Well, uh, President Joseph Fielding Smith Sr. Uh, was uh, accused of being the man in verse 8, and so he came out with a first presidency statement on this passage, saying that uh, it's null and void, and had to do uh, with W.W. W. Phelps only, therefore it's null and void. Uh, and has no uh, other connection to another man. I probably should do the Moses leading people thing. I'll get to that. Remind me. <laughs> like you can remind me. Uh, uh, but he purposely neglects two very key elements of the identity of this person. The house of God is the temple. 
he is setting in order the temple of God. That's the religious authority as the high priest. But he's also got the scepter of power. That's government authority. He is Melchizedek, the great king, the great high priest. Melchizedek. And uh, he's the Messiah. And it means what it means in verse 8. While that man who was called of God and appointed and putteth forth his hand to study the ark of God. If he was called and appointed, he can steady the ark. The ark story from uh, Ether, or, um, Ezra, uh, the people who carry the ark are not authorized. They are not called. They are not appointed. Therefore, they cannot touch the ark. But here, Joseph changes it. It's a different context. The man who is called, who is appointed, but still studies the Ark of God. Shall fall by the shaft of death, which all Mormons know the lightning thing. That's where it comes from, that verse. And it refers to the president of the church is going to fall when he thinks he can usurp the authority of the Messiah. Again, are you comparing the prophets with the Book of Mormon? How can I emphasize this further without doing a chart by chart thing for you? Okay, I was going to do Moses, wasn't I? It's going to be a little tricky. Uh, Jeremiah talks about, uh, I think it's 23. Let's go to that one first. And maybe they'll have a footnote reference to the Doctrine and Covenants passage. Okay, it's in two places in Jeremiah. Uh, one of them is in 23. Uh, therefore, behold, the days cometh, saith the Lord, in verse 7 of 23 of Jeremiah, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Who brought them out of the land of Egypt? The Lord? No, it was Moses, through inspiration of the Lord. But, in verse 8, The Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. And thus came the uh, insinuation that it's the lost tribes. Uh, although, unless you're in England, you believe it's your country. Uh, now, and so the, this is the Messiah, the symbol and type shadow uh, of Moses. And so no more are people going to be talking about Moses because the Messiah has come. And I'm not saying a footnote. <laughs> All right. I don't even have it to uh, the other Jeremiah passage. Yeah. Here's five. Oh, yeah. Because in verse five, they talk about David, a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and justice. In his days, Judah, Utah, shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is the, his name whereby he should be called the Lord our righteousness. Alrighty. So uh, you can say, oh, well, I'm going to be saved. <laughs> Not if you're bad. Alright. Um, 
I'll have to find this the hard way, and unfortunately, I'll have to have you pay attention as I'm working on this, and beating against the rushing against the clock. Uh, it's not like Moses, or is it like Moses? Man, like Moses. Section 103. Yep. Fair enough. Doctrine and Covenants, section 103, verse 16. Uh, in 15, he talks about the redemption of Zion must needs come by power. This has to do with the... Uh, the uh, it wasn't the Mormon battalion at that point, but... Uh, this was Joseph Smith, who uh, was kicked out of independence, and so he was going to go back and reclaim the land, uh, and, uh, uh they, uh, uh, uh <coughs> excuse me, they had a whole militia with them to take it back and decided not to go through with it, but he then prophesies here and says, therefore I will raise up unto my people, that's where the Messiah is a Mormon, as I've discussed previously, who shall lead them like as Moses. Moses is the type and shadow of the Messiah, thus he's the Messiah of the children of Israel. You must be led out of bondage, which means right now we're in bondage. If you don't recognize that, then you're like those of the house of Israel and of the few Egyptians that also went with them who said we had it good in Egypt and now we're eating quail in the desert so yeah. uh, and as your fathers were led at the first even so shall the redemption of Zion be so this is another thing that the Messiah will do, is with the collapsing of the United States, he shall lead only those who will follow, who believe in him, who trust in him, who know him. As Jesus asked Peter, who say ye that I am? And he denied the Messiah rice and the cock crowed so again Mormons are you comparing with the Book of Mormon I've laid out as we've gone over the scriptures who the Messiah is to be what he's supposed to know what he's supposed to do where he is born when he is born and how to know him that he is a hiker of the, to the tops of mountains, and that he uh, uh, and will live by great waters, will live uh, in a land where there are gigantic trees like the cedars of Lebanon next to a city of traffic. Uh, uh, even the coal thing. He will have vision problems, possibly, with uh, eyes being plucked out, uh, but uh, also indicates uh, something that messes up his mind, uh, as we now know that drugging uh, is used. Uh, uh, Abinadi was accused of being a terrorist and also mad, crazy mad, not angry mad. And uh, um, that is a type and shadow of the Messiah as well, conforming with the Egyptian narrative, with his eyes uh, plucked out. Abinadi was arrested. He was no longer able to prophesy to the people against the king and the priests for being wicked. They had him arrested. They're looking for somebody who's arrested, somebody who's low of stature, 
who doesn't have a government position, who doesn't have a church position, who's only an elder, who is not a high priest. Not a coincidence that Nelson took away the high priesthood from all elders. All high priests currently are going to be grandfathered out when they die. And then only religious leaders will be high priests. Are you comparing the prophets with the Book of Mormon? Alright. I think that is uh, it. I'm not sure if I have more on the Messiah. Um, I probably should do something with the dates, but I don't really need to, I guess, because I've already gone over them here. Um, yeah, I think we're done with the series. So a five-part series with an introduction. All right. Huh. Okay. So yeah, we're we're under stress right now as we await the fate of America, as we uh, await the fate of the church, as it's being sued on multiple occasions and under accusation for multiple more, as the church numbers have dwindled for the first time ever. Uh, and that's because the church got hollowed out. When the church confessed that they had been lying to us with the gospel topic essays, uh, the first reports in 2012 were that active membership just tanked. And it was only around 5 million active members. They just weren't signing the forms to say, I don't want anything to do with this church anymore. Uh, and now we're seeing the consequences of not having the large numbers of members, active members, because they don't get their kids baptized. And that's what we're witnessing now, is the loss of membership. So again, Mormons, is the Book of Mormon the keystone or not? I gotta go.